Well, today I want to talk about something that I, I do think is incredibly difficult to do in the current climate. But it, in, on the one hand, I think it might be difficult to do. And on the same hand, I actually think it's something that we're all doing a lot of at the moment. And that is getting out of our comfort zone. Uh, so as you could imagine, during the current pandemic, I think many of us are put into a situation where we're not in, 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 comfort, in a comfortable environment, whether that's because of our work situation, whether that's working for home, whether that's because you've been put in quarantine for two weeks, whether you're dealing with, you know, the challenges of financial situation, you know, it, it really is one of those times that we're, we're out of our comfort zone because of the external environment and what's happening. Um, but mostly what I'd say about that is we're out of our comfort zone without much certainty or clarity about what we're then going to put our attention on that makes us really thrive, uh, happy, satisfied and fulfilled. And when we're in that place, it's very difficult to um, experience some sense of satisfaction or hope. Um, on, on the contrary, when we take actions that have us get out of our comfort zone but focus on something that we're deeply passionate about, there is a, an, an, not only an enhanced level of satisfaction that comes with that, but a deep level of motivation that has us not just only want to get up out of bed in the morning, but actually leap out of bed. And in many cases, travel from one side of the world to the other, doing some things that you could say are in crazy, right? Really crazy. And um, today, I this is really a great conversation to be having uh, because today I'm speaking with a lady called Laura Pena, who is the founder of She's the Universe, uh, which is a, a not-for-profit girls movement uh, that is about empowering girls around the globe. And she's just literally come back uh, from her travels. She came to Australia, uh, was interviewing girls here, and then was uh, in Southeast Asia and was pretty much caught there during the middle of the pandemic. But she's now bus, uh, back home and she's been home now for a month. But half of that time, she's been in quarantine, self-quarantine, um, and but is now back out. And I'm absolutely thrilled because today we're going to talk about her journey. Um, Lauda has also done a TEDx talk uh, called Our Future Depends on These Girls. So her journey, uh, you know, we're going to talk to her about what she does for a living, but also, you know, what inspired her to take action on this movement, which she has said is for her getting out of her comfort zone for something that she's deeply passionate about and something that, you know, makes her heart sing. So thank you so much for joining me today, Lauda. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This is super exciting. And, and um, I love all of, all of the things that you say. And I have so much to say about all of that, especially like stepping out of your comfort zone. That's like something in my mind all the time. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, I want to, let's talk, start, why don't we start with the um, passion project that you've got that, that, that started as a movement, because that's pretty topical and current for you right now, because you have just landed back in the country at home, right? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So I'd have been, so I am a filmmaker and an animator and I tell stories for a living. And in, you know, for the past few years, I've been working on this uh, thing that started as a, as a passion project, as something that I felt like I needed to do. And I have no idea of how I was going to do this. So this is the part where I'm like, I have no clue how am I going to do this, but I know I have to. And the drive was so big that actually I created this thing, right? And, and so what I'm doing is um, I went out into the world with a quest to interview 111 girls to tell their stories. And so I wanted to understand what is it the girls, today's girls need from all of us to get to where they want to be in life. You know, I, 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 you know, people ask like, why do you want to do that? And there's so many reasons, but one a big reason is I see the lack of leadership, like the lack of women leaders around the world. And that really breaks my heart. And, and I, I started wondering why, like, why is it like this? Or, and more importantly, where does it start? It's like, where is it that women stop believing in themselves? Where is it that us start losing our confidence? 
And so that led me to this journey that I'm on now. And, and I've, uh, so far I've, so I started two years ago and I thought that this was going to be a cute project that I was going to do in a year. I was going to have all these films out and it was going to be the end of it. And that was going to be cool. Like, you know, something I did once and it has become my life and I don't think I will stop anytime now. And it has evolved organically into this beautiful thing that I will tell you more about. Um, but it's a community of girls from all over the world that gather online now, you know, once the pandemic hit, the, the project kind of did what the, it does best, which is like bringing people together. And so that's what I've been doing for the past, uh, for the past few years, I've been telling stories about girls in film. Um, for the past few months, I've been um, connecting girls from all over the world to talk about their dreams, about their issues, about their, you know, all of the things that they want to connect on um, with other people that are like them, that maybe they don't think that have anything in common with them, but then, then they really get to know each other and they're like, whoa, we're not that different. And I love, I love to see the girls that have been in this program for, for a few months now and see and see how they have, I love to see how these girls have evolved and how their confidence has increased and how they, they are actually able to recognize that in themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so it, this started as a, yeah, filming and now it's all, it's a community. So uh, I am curious about the, because you said that the beginning, you know, there was a burning desire. I mean, those weren't exactly your words, but what I was left with was that burning desire that you had, that you wanted to, you had to do something about that, that got you, you know, what does have someone shift into taking an action, right? Because many of us have ideas and we see what's going on in the world. Right. And, you know, there's all, you, you know, that, but there's something happened for you that got lit up big enough that had you say, no, I'm actually going to do something about this. Can you, do, do you remember when that moment was for you, when that actual moment happened? So this is something that I talk with friends and people a lot about, you know, like, there, I don't feel like there was, there are many moments. There's not just one, because this is the thing, like we want an answer to like, this is the path. And this is the moment when the light bulb, goes off and this is true like there's a moment there was a moment a key moment but before that moment there were like tiny little moments that led mm -hmm. me to that moment and after that moment there were tiny little moments that led me to the next moments mm -hmm. so there's i don't feel like it's like a one thing light bulb this is it and i know exactly when i when i decided to do this there was no um this is it and i know exactly what it is that i'm gonna do like people mm. expect that and i think that's why a lot of people don't take action because they're waiting for that mm. thing mm. um but for but if i had to like pick a moment was um a few years ago i had a very uh i had a bad breakup not a bad breakup a divorce you know very sad moment in my life where i actually changed everything you know, I quit my job, I moved, put everything, gave everything away, put everything in storage and decided to go and travel the world. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I, I was traveling for a few years and I'm very lucky that what I do, you know, I can do from everywhere. Like a lot of people now are realizing that they can do the things that they do everywhere. But I've been doing this for, for many years now. And that, that was in 2014 that I started this lifestyle. And you know, as I travel, I, I was like, there's something missing. Like, I love this life, but what am I doing with my life? Really? Like, this is great. Like I can do this. Like I was, I remember I was in Bali and it was great and it was perfect. And I was like, yeah, but like, what is like, what, what is my, you know, what's, what is my purpose in life? Like, is this like, you know, I had, I had many moments where I feel like, is this it? Is this, is this life? I'm like there must be more, right? And and so that beautiful like question because the questions are the ones the things that actually led me to the the and the journey. Sometimes it's not the answer. It's not that I got the answers. I get the questions, and I was like, whoa, that question leads to another question. So the question was, what, 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 what is it that, like, if you die tomorrow, what was the question? No, ah, the question was. What are you most afraid of? 
And it's so simple. And I'm sure that a lot of people have had that question asked to them or they have asked themselves that question. But when I asked that to myself, I was like, if I were to die tomorrow, my biggest fear is that I will die with all of my potential inside of me. Because even though I was doing something that I love, because I was, you know, as an animator, this is very fun. Like a lot of people, you know, I was traveling, I was doing this thing, but still, I was like, I feel like there's a lot more that I can give. Mm. And it will be so sad if I leave this earth with this inside. And so that moment led me to another, like, you know, fast forward, maybe two years after I found myself in the Dominican Republic back here, you know, this is where I'm from. I be, by the way, I've been, I live in the United States for many years. That's been my home. I lived in New York for 13 years. And so when I, I came back to the Dominican Republic to visit my family and I went to visit this place, which is a, it's called the Mariposa Foundation. And it's an after school, after school program for girls in a very, um, in a very poor community. And, and the moment I came into this place, and I saw the girls, there were girls everywhere. They were, they were, they had an event that day. And so the girls were like, like putting on makeup because they were, they were going to perform and they were like, I could see all the rooms in this place. It was like a holistic, it's like an after school program. That's very holistic, like their approach to education and, and seeing girls being that free, especially coming from a country where girls don't usually are that free you know, I can know as a woman, I cannot go out to jog by myself. Like I will never go out to run by myself, for example, in my country. I'll be like, you know, men will like, like whistle at me at every, at every corner. And they will do that to little girls too. So seeing the girls being that free, like being themselves, just gave me a sense of, whoa, like what is this place? And I started crying. And then there was a mirror that said, um, you are, so the girls will look at themselves in the mirror, right? And there was a quote that said, you are the most powerful force to change the world. And so I kept thinking, oh my God, can you imagine a girl that grows up, like seeing their face next to this quote all the time, every day? I was like, there's something. And that moment was when I was like, there's something here. I've never worked with girls before. I didn't, you know, I didn't call myself a feminist. Now I do. And I didn't, you know, like I, I didn't understand this world and that I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And, but I knew that there was something there for me. And that curiosity that was like, what is this? Like, what is, what is this feeling? Like, why is this so touching to me? Like, why, why do I feel like the need to come back here? And I went back and of course I realized, whoa, there's so much beauty in our stories. Yeah. Um, and, and did you, did you come up with an answer to that for yourself? Like why, why you, why was it so important for you? Mm. I think I, you know, I, as a little girl, as a, if I could go back in time to my 13 year old self, I will tell her, you know, you're not alone and you're not invisible and I see you. And I feel like I, I can now go back in time and do that, but I can, I can tell that to other girls, right? Like I can go out and, and be like, hey, tell me your story. Like, what are your dreams? Like, tell me about you. And, and I feel like I'm, I'm going, one, healing my own, you know, self, like inner girl, little girl that's still there that needs a lot of love and, and didn't feel seen when she was younger. Um, and also the world. I feel like there's many, many reasons, but I think that our world needs us right now. And I don't know why me. I might never know why. I just know that I had to do it. I just know that, you know, it's one of those things that you're like, well, I wish someone was doing something about it. I was like, wait a minute, I am someone, right? Like, maybe I should do something about it. And, and I think that the trick to do something and how I do it, because, you know, you say something key about how a lot of people had a lot of projects because I had so many ideas. 
you know, at that point in my life, I had so, I remember I did a PowerPoint presentation to a friend because I was like, someone needs to listen to all of these things that are in my head. And, and like, how do you pick one of these things, right? Like, I, this is great as a creative, like there's so many things that I want to do. How do you pick one? And the, the, you know, the answer is like, sometimes you just have to pick one. And just like, what is the one that keeps coming up, keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And it's kind of aligned with the things that you believe in. Mm. And, and so I think that that's, you know, for me to take action, it has to be, it has been about tricking myself every single time. It's like, what is the next thing to do? If I start thinking a lot about like how, like, I have my vision, right? Like I am a visionary. I can see exactly how this can look like and what this can do. And, but it's overwhelming because I can see it. I can see how amazing and big this can be. I don't know how to go from this to this. Mm. I have no clue. So the only thing that I know is how to go from this to like this. Mm. And, then, and then I have to trust. There's a lot of trust that when I get here, I will figure it out how to go here mm. and then how to move to the next step, you know? baby steps yeah. but I have to yeah. trick myself because otherwise I'll get overwhelmed and never you know and and back out of it every time that I feel overwhelmed about this being you know coming becoming too out of hand I have mm. to remember right now what is it right now that I need to do what is mm. it tomorrow and always 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 having the people that I'm serving in the front center like making sure that everything that I do is for the girls. Mm. So yeah. well, one of the things that you said about why you got started was to, you know, this concern about what, when do women lose their confidence? You know, what, what, what is happening there? Uh, what, where did you land on that? Whether that's, you know, I suppose from your own experience and whether you noticed that for yourself or uh, what you discovered out of doing the interviews, wh where did you land so far on that? Yeah. So also in this journey, I found this um, article, this um, study, and it's called The Code of Confidence for Girls. And it was this, that, it, that was in the New York Times. And it was a survey where they interview like thousands of girls from, you know, and young, uh, young girls and, and teenagers from eight, eight years old to 18. And they discovered that between the ages of uh, eight to 14, girls' confidence grow, goes down uh, to 30%. You know, and they did, like, the study included boys and girls, right? And they had a lot of conversations also with their tutors, not only with the girls. And so for me, that was very shocking. I was like, what? like why? Like, why is it that we lose our confidence? And the study talks a lot about how, of course, and, and the media plays a huge role you know, the lack of representation, the lack of us seeing other people that look like us is huge. Um, but also it's this idea of, you know, that perfectionism, how we have to be so perfect all the time. And we learned that very young, you know, and it's in school, like I remember how I didn't, I, even though I had the answer, sometimes I will not raise my hand just because I didn't want to have the wrong answer. And then I'll hear it from another person and I'll be like, but I knew that. And so that's something that we continue doing. Like, you know, I remember being in a, you know, in a conference room with my colleagues and me knowing the answer to something and having an idea and not saying anything and then hearing that same idea from someone else. I was like, I thought of that. Like, why didn't I say that? And, I, you know, a big thing is, is that, that we have to have this thing perfect before we actually put it out there or we actually say something. And that's huge. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it sounds so simple, right? Like a, it's a very simple example, but it, but the, it is often the culmination of a lot of the simple times where we don't speak up that com compounds. And then the less we say, the less confident we become. And then the more that that happens and the less we take action, the less confident we become, right? Right. And, it, and that's the thing. It starts so young and so early that it gets, it's a, accumulates. And there's a point where you don't even remember that this is what's happening, but it is. I mean, there's other factors as well. Um, but I, but you know, this is what I keep finding over and over, especially talking to the girls is this idea of how they have to have things perfectly before they put it out there, before they, before they say something, you know, excuse me. 
<laughs> Bless you. You know, taking risks. <laughs> so, so um, is ri- so risk risks. taking does did risk take taking seem to correlate with what you with with mm-hmm. confidence for them? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, because you know, it goes hand in hand because taking risks is is actually um, putting yourself in a position where things might not be perfect. You know, yeah. it's not because when, when something is perfect, like that's not a risk, you know, it's, a, it's about being, <laughs> you know, like, that, like that's not a risk. Like what are you that's risking risk. with that? That's, safe. <laughs> that's very so safe. I, it's like, yeah. yeah. Look, I'm really fascinated by this louder because, um, you know, and I think it would be interesting to put the spotlight on what it actually looks like for a moment. Right. Because, you know, it's almost like the cliche statements that we can say, you know, be brave, get out of your comfort zone, stop focusing mm. on being perfect. And, you know, there's risk taking and, you know, uh, okay, we, we, we got all that, that, you know. So can you recall a time for yourself where uh, you had the experience where that was the case, um, where you didn't where you could even see that you were potentially waiting to have something be perfect and not doing it but then made some decision or you know decided to to go for it regardless of having it all worked out um and can can we talk about that because i'm interested in hearing from somebody who's what in, in the play of it because i think there's something to be said for what actually does that look like and and what occurs for a person um for themselves can you recall a time absolutely there's so many right. but you know Let's, which, one, which one comes to mind like, hey, yeah so the, the one that comes to mind is like for this project right like I've been telling stories my whole life but I'm not a filmmaker like I didn't call myself a filmmaker actually right. I remember going to going to an event and, and someone asked me what do you do and I'm like I'm an animator and this was a filmmaker's event right I wanted I was there to meet other people making films and then this woman she comes and everybody's like oh and she's like oh hi I'm so and so and I'm a filmmaker and and I'm like oh that's great I want to meet the filmmaker so we're like talking and then I'm like so how long have you been doing this and she's like well I've been doing this for two weeks and I'm like <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> and that day I was like I am a filmmaker and I'm calling myself that <laughs> I was like what the heck like it's just about like I'm gonna fake it until I make it and that is exactly what I did I was you know before I started this I ne- I've never never in my life done an interview never yeah. sit with someone to ask them questions like this um and I feel like I can tell you now that I'm very good at it and uh you know just like celebrating that part of me um but but I, I had no clue. And I was like, oh, maybe I, you know, I, I started thinking of all the, the things that I should do before I do this. I was like, yes. well, maybe I started looking at classes. I was like, maybe I should go back to school and study filmmaking, right? Like, I feel yes. such an impo- like such an imposter yes. doing this. I, yes. There's so many, how can I call myself a filmmaker if so many amazing people that I admire yeah, are just, the films you, know, my, you produce? Surely you have to have oh, like what, 10 films produced before you can call yourself a filmmaker, right? I have exactly and I don't have the language like I still talk about these things and I'm like you can see my films and then we'll talk about it but don't ask me to talk about like very like technical things because I learn by doing it like I never Mm. trained on on it like this specifically so I think for me that was huge to just like be like okay I'm gonna go to South America that was like the first um you know, actually I did interviews in the US and then in the DR, but the, the biggest risk was like going to South America, especially Peru, where I didn't know anybody. And, you know, and I, the way that I, um, that I will find the girls, um, and, and I think maybe I told you so far, I've interviewed already 70 girls in 13 right. countries. Right. Um, and so, but, the, but when I was there, I was like, well, I'm coming and they're like, but do you have anyone that you're gonna, that you know that you're gonna interview? I was like, no, I don't. But you know, I, I don't, I have a plan that's really bad. Like my plan was really bad. I was like, my plan was like, I will show up there and I'll start asking people and then someone will lead me to somewhere. So I feel like a lot of that, you know, is, is risk taking, even when things are not because I waited for my whole life to have a perfect plan, yes. you know, for, you know, like, what is my purpose? Like, I wanted to be like, yes. this is it. Yes. I still like, people still ask me, people still ask me like, okay, so what is it? What is, what do you, 
what is next? Like, what is the, what do you see in the future? And I was like, I can tell you what I feel, Mm. but I, but I, I don't know, you know, and, and in the way, the thing is I made mistakes and then I learned from them and I move on because if I waiting, waiting to do this was not an option. I felt like this is the moment and I had to do it. Like, Mm. I, ha- I wanted to be part of this so bad. Like, I, I was like, if I, like, I feel like there's something happening in the world. There's a change. And I wanted mm. to be part of that change. Yes, yes, so. I got that. And uh, so a couple, of, a couple of things I want to go back to. Uh, but firstly, the first one I want to go back to is the comment you made about, you know, when you asked about what, what the, what's next or what that future looks like. And you said, uh, well, I can't see that. I can feel that. Uh, you know, uh, I often hear that from people and often it's because, you know, often the, you know, uh, well, it's part about the brain science piece actually because often when we ask those questions, we almost expect that it should be there like we're able to answer that question when the question's asked, asked of us. Except what I know about the brain is that, we can't see those things from the uh, emotional part of our brain. So in the, um, you know, just going to get into a bit of brain science here to park. Kind no, of, do it, know, do it. I love it. Conversation and then want to ask you, right? So, because I'm interested in actually seeing what you can see. So it, 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 do, do, it, does that work for you? Do you mind if we just look at that for a second? Let's, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You look, you're not the only one, right? And, I, and, I, and, and because I do come across this a bit, I think it would be really fabulous to actually see what you can see because we often get asked those questions and we, we take an immediate look, but where we're looking from is in part of the brain that actually can't see that stuff. And so when we can't see it, we automatically think, oh, I can't see it, I can just feel it, which is very typical for a woman because a woman draws on how she feels. Now, that's a great thing. But Absolutely. often what I've noticed then is that if, if you stick, if you stick with or we stick with the, the consideration long enough that we, we get, we disengage the emotional part of the brain so that we can shift into what's called the prefrontal cortex, right, which sits at the front. Because, and, and actually you'd be very masterful in this, being an animator and a filmmaker, that the creativity comes from that part of our brain. So it's not until we kind of stop, uh, and obviously there's a stack of practices, right, that actually can force that to happen, right? But if, if we just, one of them is simply stopping long enough and just breathing and not looking for an answer that eventually with a couple of questions, we can actually start to tap into that part of the brain. And all of a sudden those answers start to come alive and we surprise ourselves. And that's, that's really the joy of life is the joy of life sits in the discovery moments. Um, so uh, if, if we were just to look at that for a moment, uh, you know, there was a desire you had to make a difference and a desire that you saw and, and that you saw something possible uh, out of you taking action in doing this work for girls. Um, and you mentioned things like the role modeling, you know, the, the leadership that's required in order for girls to step into a future. I mean, if we were just to stop and think about that for a moment and we looked at what we thought was the ideal scenario, like what would be the dream state really if, if there was an environment where girls could really thrive and there were role models and there were great leadership in place, what do you think that that future would look like? Oh, I love that. Ah, yes. So can you just describe, describe what it looks like for describe, you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So for me, that future is a future, of course, where, where girls are confident and they are actually, and what that means is they're not secure guessing themselves all the time. You know, when they feel like they, they when they um, have an idea, instead of being like, no, that's stupid, they will actually try it out. Um, that's for girls, right? And then eventually you will have girls that will make better decisions for themselves and then for their families, right? Because, you know, something that my mother keeps reminding me is, you know, there are the mothers of the future because she's a mother, so she's like very motherly. Um, and she's like, you know, like 
we talk, we talk about this, like if we, that there are, I see a future where mother, the, uh, the girls make better decisions at picking their partners, you know, whoever their partners they choose. And then if they decided to have kids, then we're, we're going to raise better kids also, not better kids, but in, in different environments where, you know, it's, it's a ripple effect, right? Like, you know, we have the family, the families, um, a different way but the the biggest thing is how we lead as women like vulnerable like with vulnerability with compassion with those attributes that are so feminine and meaning not feminine in that it's only women but we both right like we men and women have both feminine and masculine at like you know attributes and but we don't we don't we don't see the feminine attributes as as you know powerful or as important like when i say oh i want to you know when i'm making decisions like the people like i see a world where people make decisions from you know following their intuition and that's okay when they make choices that are like that are about the people and not you know for the people that are in power but for but to empower the people so i i that's the world that i see where where there's more compassion more love more unity um yeah it's an utopian world and you know and it's one of those things that i'm like i i i believe that it's possible yeah i i i totally can see it like i'm if i can see it yeah so unity, compassion, vulnerability, you, and and for you right now, you can see for yourself what that looks like. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and you see that it's also possible. Yes. Yes. Yes, and even though it may look right now euphor- eu- euphoric, right? Okay, I got yeah. that. But but if you were to stand there long enough and look at it from that perspective, do you think you could see enough things that there would be? certain actions that you know you could take and do to to mobilize whatever you need to in order to have it happen i think that many people it's not just me that's yeah, the totally. thing this is something yeah, that totally. right 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 i, I yeah. yeah right yeah i think right yes but, of but, course but, yes but you, I, but you can see for yourself that you, there are things oh, that yeah. you can see that you can actually do like even though it may seem euphoric in terms of the desired state there's no doubt for yes. you that you're like, yeah, I know that there are things I can do to actually have that. Yeah, yeah great. absolutely. Okay, great. Yes. Well, there yep. you go. We just, we just, we just disrupted the view that you have that you can't see it. So now you see it mm. and you feel it mm. that, that that's, you know, there you go. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think it really is. And, and look, the, the, other, the re- other reason I think is really valuable to talk about that is because what you were saying about with girls and where they lack their confidence was in, uh, you know, whatever happens to stop, you, you know, the perfectionism. So they wait in order to see a certain thing that looks perfect. And so we go, well, risk taking only comes when you're willing to take the action before you have it all worked out. But I, mm-hmm. as you were saying it, look, I... I, I haven't dug deep into this this particular aspect of it before, but what stuck struck me was the part about it occurring like it's a risk because we haven't worked it out. But is it really a risk? Mm. You know, we think it's a risk because we have a view that we've got to have it all worked out. But look, like we just demonstrated then, you know, we can imagine bold new futures, right? And then we right. only think it's a risk for what reason exactly? I'm not, that, that's right. now to me occurring like an illusion that it's mm. even risky in the first place because it's all fucking made up anyway. Excuse my problem. Right. Hey, no, right? it is, it is true. And actually like, you know, for me, the biggest risk in my life is, was actually not doing anything and continuing the way that I was, you know, like the continuing what we have right now is the biggest risk, you yeah, know, exactly, like, exactly right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like 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 making a change even if we don't know like you know if we don't freaking know what this is going to look like but we can see like i can see what it's possible yeah 
it's really you're you're right it's like really not a risk it's like actually yeah. this is common sense yeah 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 well you know i do think that's part of the i think that's the part for me that i'm seeing that's actually now missing you know is that we get stuck on you know considering that it's a risk and then we focus on the difficulty and what we don't have or what we should have or what we need to do and how mm. we need to be a certain way learn certain things go do more study you know we build up this bank of things that we think that we need because we relate to it like a risk but when you do the thinking about the desired end state I think and what you think it looks like but then you stick with that question long enough to say well what do you think are some of the simple things you could do to do that where all of a sudden we're just for, now it's about what you said at the beginning about you know when you did it you don't you know if you go too far to think about the future uh, in terms of what you've got to do to achieve that bigger goal uh, you get into overwhelm but when you think about that and then you then you just focus in on well what are the simple things that I can do today then you don't get stuck at all. And, 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 and that's, that's where I think for all of us, you know, whether they're 12 year old girls, I mean, I've got an 11 year old daughter, right. And she's got no question. She, yeah. she, she's brash. I mean, you know, what, what can I expect? I suppose with a mother like me, but um, you know, <laughs> dealt with, dealt with myself and, and it's had a great impact. Thank God. Uh, but you know, yes. there's going to be times where for herself, you know, she's going to question herself and uh, you know, but even as, as adults, you know, uh, Laura, I think we have a. I do think we have a responsibility as as adults in the current environment to to apply this because, as you said at the beginning, you know, without the role models, the female role models. Let's just hone in on that one. Whether it's female role models, Laura, or whether it's uh, male role models in in that same voice, right? Because it's it is a collective yep. view about leadership. That Absolutely. Without us actually doing the change, you know, without us going, oh, I have to give up my own illusion about it being a risk. I have to be willing to look for myself about what that is. I have to be willing to do that. Then how do we expect it to be possible for the next generation if oh. we're not still willing to deal with it for ourselves? Right. That's the thing. The change cannot only come from like, from the the next generation it, we have to change right because it's true like they are seeing us and so this is when i when i think of leadership so, you know like when i was thinking of you and and, and your podcast i was thinking yeah like what are, what is it what what is a leader like what are, how do i think of a leader and i'm like i know that i i lead my life in the way that i that i hope that they were also lead their lives right like even when when I, when there are things that I'm like oh this is very uncomfortable for me but will I ask them to do this yes absolutely I will tell them get out of your comfort zone right but I have to do it first it's like you know we have we had this like very deep conversations among all of the girls and 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 some adults that come into into this um, monthly gatherings and and it's modeling vulnerability is modeling what is what is listening what is compassion you know and we don't just describe these things we actually do them because we can learn from each other this is it like you can tell your kids so many like to do this do this this is if they don't see it right if they don't see it they will not they will not like you know it's that's how they learn that's how we learn mm. Yeah, totally. Right. And I do, yep. you, we mm. do have a responsibility in our generation to deal with that because I even notice, you know, I think we've come out of a generation where, uh, you know, as parents, we'd say, well, you do as I say, not as I do. It's okay for me to do what I do. You know, you, you're a child. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that ain't going to cut it anymore uh, because that's, that's not, it, you know, we're just kind of re going to repeat the same things. But um, for, for what, when I when you go so you just wanted to talk then briefly about leadership for you what what is in your view great leadership for if you would apply for yourself when you have the experience for yourself of being somebody who's being a great leader what does that experience look like for you yeah so I feel like the the things that come to mind are you know the same you know vulnerability just being willing to to go there with people to know that we're we're not above them you know like as a leader i feel like you cannot just be because i also grew up with this idea that someone you know that was my boss for example was like someone that will like tell me what to do 
and you just go do it and they will like put their feet up and just do nothing. I mean, I feel like great, great leaders are right there with you, you know, right. without going too much into politics. Um, yes. I'm going to go into politics because I, you know, this is my view, right? Like I love the prime minister of New Zealand. I love Jacinda Arden. And what I know of her, especially seen with this pandemic and what has happened and how things have been handled there, you know, from the beginning, I feel like something that I've been observing, I was like, what is it that did it, that, that made that New Zealand was for so long without any case? Like, how did they, like, what was it? Because a lot of countries acted very quickly, right? But I think that what she did, because I was following her on social media, she will go live every single day on Facebook. She will go where the people are. She will be with the people. She will be talking about what is happening. Like not from a place of like, I'm here, I'm telling you what to do. Mm. More of like, we're doing this together. We're doing this together. And I feel like for me, that was like, I was like, that is the kind of leadership that I hope that we can have more of, mm. which is like, mm we're all in this together. It's not like mm. I'm telling you what to do, go do it mm. while I wait yes. here and tell you if it's good or not. It's like, let's all do this together. Yeah, yeah. So just back on to your project, uh, the uh, She's the Universe. Where are you mm -hmm. now at with the interviews? Yeah, so because of this uh, pandemic, I paused the interviews. I was supposed to be going to South Africa and then other countries in Africa um, in the coming months, but that's not happening, of course, obviously, mm -hmm. but I have a lot of content to edit. And so what I've been doing from the beginning is I'm releasing episodes as I go. There are about seven episodes already, uh, and people can find it on, on the website at cheesetheuniverse.org. Mm -hmm. And um, there are incredible stories and beautiful. They will make you cry. So bring mm -hmm. some tissues with you. Mm -hmm. um, in, a, in the most, like a six-year-old actually described them as happy and sad. I was like, yes, that's exactly the perfect way to describe this. So that's where I am with that. And, and that's the part of the films. Um, but with the part, I feel like what I knew that, the world and the girls needed right now was community. Um, and so we've been really focusing on community right now and, and using storytelling within our community. You know, like there are about, um, in the past few months, I, I, I believe like about a hundred girls have come through these meetings from all over the world. Like we have maybe like six girls from Australia, a few girls from New Zealand, from the Philippines, from the United States. Um, from Bolivia, Argentina, Spain, Denmark, and they all, you know, different groups gather together and, and connect. Mm -hmm. And, and, so and they you, come up with ideas and stuff, yeah. Right, so you said um, 111 was the, was that the goal or what you've done? <clears throat> so that's the goal. And I've oh. interviewed so far, yeah. And I've interviewed, so far from those, I've, I've done 70. 70, and can I ask you mm -hmm. why 111? It's a kind of like a um, very um, spiritual number. Is it? It's it's like a yeah. It's kind of like the it's like the. Have you ever have have this ever happened to you that you keep seeing something over and over and over again? When that happens to me, I see that as a sign. Yeah. So I see the number one hundred and eleven all Are the you time. Serious? Or you one. Use, what do you yeah. What do you mean like uh, all the time. signs and things or in the street? Like for, okay. Okay. For, for, for example, right? Like today I was like uh, going out and I'm driving and I see uh, on the uh, for gas and it says that the price is 111, <laughs> 111 pesos, right? So then yes. I, I'm like, oh, yes. I was like, this is so great. And then I keep yes. driving and I talk, I'm talking to my mom and I look at the clock and it's 100, like it's 11, 11. Yes. I am. And, I, and I'm like, and I told my mom, I was like, look, this is, this is it. Like every time I see it, this is a sign. And so when I start looking up the number and it has to do with uh, manifesting one's dreams. And I was like, this is great because I talk about wow. dreams with the girls. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this, this project has a life of its own. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you could say it was my idea. I don't, I don't think so. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, the name, the name came in a dream. Um, and everything else has been 
um, part of a beautiful process of unfolding that I don't think that comes from me. Well, I, I, I suspect it does. Uh, in fact, I, I'm reminded of the real power of what we'd call vision and that mm. the idea of something percolating in our brain, it's a bit like when you say, don't think of a pink elephant and then all you can think about is a pink <laughs> elephant, you know? You can or, see that everywhere. That's right, right? Or when you're playing those games in the car with your siblings and it's spot the yellow car, like all of a sudden, you know, you're spotting the yellow car. And I think what there is uh, to get is actually how powerful we are as a human being is that we actually do manifest the very thing that we create. So in, in our thinking, you know, when our, we put our attention on something and we go looking for it, those things show up. And and I've even noticed, you know, I, I know you, you kind of say, you know, it's a bit spiritual with the numbers, right? And I kind of, at first I was like, oh yeah, I can get that. And then I thought, actually, I, I, I've noticed it even for myself. Every time I do an interview, right, there is so much fabulous stuff said, right? But it's funny because when I leave the interview, there's always one sentence or one word that somehow etches in my brain. And, you know, at first I'd kind of go, oh, I wonder what, you know, what, why, why did that particularly show up? Was that weird or is it, you know, is, is it a sign? Like, like, is it a sign? And then right. just hearing you saying that, I'm like, actually, no, 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 that's, that's us seeing something in particular because it lines up with something that we're look, that we're on a mission for or that you know you know and i get the spiritual side because as you know with meditation right and what you know doing a lot of deep right. at the moment i think i'm on day 120 deep back meditation uh oh my god you know, 100 you say 110 that means 111 yeah, about 120 so. now I, in fact i shouldn't go ah. back and count so um but it's the same thinking you know that what we put our attention on is is intentional uh mm -hmm. and so i whilst it whilst it's certainly spiritual because let's face it that spiritual domain is when we're we're removing our thinking away from being actively on thoughts all the time but i do think there's something miraculous in that but i don't think it's any accident and and, and whilst i think we kind of go well it's not me actually no, no, no. When we're in, oh, that's, that's what they describe it as, right? In when flow, we're in line, right? Or when you're in a yes, line yes. with the universe, then we all, you know, things move. I think it's actually to validate that the reason we're seeing those things is because we are on track with the thing that is fundamentally important to us. Right. I love that. That's a great right? way to see it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, thank you yeah. for shedding the light on that conversation. I mean, two miraculous things I've had in this conversation today. <laughs> I love it. About, like, really has been profound. Um, a couple of quick questions, because I could talk with you all day. Um, I do want to bring back to two questions. One is about your greatest accomplishment today. And, and, and I do acknowledge that there can be so many. So I just want you to pick your favourite one that stands out. And then one of your greatest challenges. But firstly... Um, if you were to look just what occurs to you immediately, what would you say has been one of your favorite accomplishments? Mm. Ah, that's a great question. I think. If it's absolutely. okay to say yourself. That, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I you know. I came up, but I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I love that. Do you know? I love anyway, that. What, yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I think just like, you know, going for it and without, without knowing, without listening to the people that were saying, how, why, you know, when I didn't even know the why exactly, without listening to my other voice that said, oh, this is so stupid. Like, why are you doing this? Like, what's the point? Where is the money that you're making? You're not making any money. You're actually spending all of your money on this and actually doing it because, you know, in this process, I have met so many people and so many people have to come together for me to be able to meet everyone, every single one of the 70 girls. And along with them, I mm. met their families. And just, I have such a beautiful view of the world right now. You know, after this experience, I feel like my world has expanded and my family on earth has expanded. And I feel like my heart is everywhere with mm. each single one of those girls. And for me, 
doing that has been one of my biggest accomplishments, I think. Mm -hmm. God, I tell you, yeah. it's so beautiful. And I, I'm so inclined just to want to end on that because it's such a beautiful way to complete. But I do like to understand what I thought was the biggest challenge because at the same time <laughs> for people, for uh, even for others, I guess, is that we can often always think about focus. We've got to focus on always the good stuff. But to get to the good stuff, it often takes being willing to challenge yourself on some of the obstacles. What was some of the, or what was one of them or some of the things that you found were the, the hardest things uh, or the biggest obstacle you had to face? In life, in well, general? In life or just what, it, what it, you know, it, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever's there. I mean, whatever's there. Okay, for let me see. Let me see what wants to, because I'm always like, always thinking, okay, like part of, I feel like part of what I say is for me and part of what I'm saying is also for someone else that needs to hear what I have to say. So I'm yes. always like, what is it that I want to say? But what is it that someone else might need to hear right now? Yes. Um, so I feel like hmm, the biggest challenge is always leaving my family behind. I think it's a, it's a constant one. You know, I, I decided to travel the world this way i'm a nomad so i don't really have a home like i'm here just to be with my family right now and i'm a very family oriented person like in the dominican republic we're very close and just having to leave them all the time breaks my heart um so that for yeah so when i when i moved to the us having to leave my family because i knew that there was a better future for me waiting on the other side of me, you know, I, I went into a country where I didn't speak the language to go to university and I was taking university level classes in another language. That was like really hard knowing that my family was, you know, very far. And um, yeah, mm. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can get that. You know, the, 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 it's what it provides and the, you know, especially when you're off traveling by yourself as well, you know, it's, it's mm. a, I'm actually reminded now of my, my own kids and thinking, God, I think I'll be the one that's <laughs> going through the difficult time when they decide to leave. <laughs> it won't be the other way around. Uh, and just one final statement to finish. And by the way, I'm going to put all the details for She's the Universe into the show notes so that we can get people to take a look at the stories as well. Um, and, 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 and in some respects, you know, I know we talked about your experience of what it looks like for you as a leader. Uh, let, let's... I, I like to end on having somebody have you declare what it is that a leader looks like to you by completing a statement. Um, so if you can complete this sentence, a leader is someone who. Mm. A leader is someone that puts aside. Mm. Ah, I love that. I love what, what my brain is doing. My brain is like, yeah, it's someone that puts aside their own needs to you know and this is i'm thinking of a leader as a mother and that's very you know very feminine thing to do putting everybody else's needs before them but i feel like a leader is someone that first look at themselves and learn about themselves before they can actually lead others Fabulous. i love that i do love mm. that it's the paradox, right, of serving others yes. in service of oneself. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. That's the only way to serve others. Yeah. It's Thank you. Beautiful. That was a great. I love that. I love that too. I love that too. <laughs> will you plaster that all over your website now? <laughs> I will. It's so, Thank so, you so been much. so lovely to talk with you and to finally meet you in person. Um, I've been so thrilled and waiting to to meet with you, given what I've heard about, you know, the, the, the project and what you're up to. Uh, so thank Thank you for joining me today. And uh, and and is the best where's the best place for people to reach out to you? Uh, for people, they can follow um, me on social media. So my Instagram is I am Laura Pena, and it's Laura. It's L A U R A, and then the word Pena, P E N A. You can put well, that there. I am Laura Pena. And we will put yes. it in the show notes so that you can connect through to her. And of course, make sure you please go out and read some of these beautiful stories. And of course, to finish on uh, Laura, we want to flick back to uh, 
encouraging people to forget the fact that it's a risk uh, to get yes. out of one's comfort zone may not actually be as uncomfortable as what you think. So I don't know, the takeout for me, Laura, today is instead of concerning ourselves with that is to actually focus on identifying what it is that you're truly passionate about and what the future looks like that you're wanting to create for yourself and simply just put one foot in front of the other. I love that. I love that. Yes. Great. Thanks again for joining me. Thank you so much for this. This is lovely. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Well, woo. beautiful. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank very you. Welcome. Thank you. It was a beautiful interview, and I'm very, uh, you know, it was just some really beautiful things in there. And uh, you know, my interviews don't normally go like that. Just so you know. <laughs> Um, but it was just really beautiful and I, I, and I think there was so, and I think because the, I think the thing there is to acknowledge about you and it was the, I think you even said it right at the end of the interview about how you look for when you want to say something, you're thinking from not yeah. only what is it that's there for you to say, but what is it there for other people to hear? And I think oh. that's, that's a, you know, that is that that speaks volumes in who you are how you show up and so it was it was really there when you were sharing about your vision that what that whole thing was about was not just about uh your story but how we could take what was in your story and have other people really get value from that so thank you for for doing that that was really extraordinary Thank you. I love it. Like I, I sometimes I forget that I have access to that. And that is when I follow that part of me that actually knows there's a knowing there, you know, and I actually, I felt like I wanted to share that process out loud because that's what I, I was, I was just doing that. And I was like, okay, what is it that I want to say? Hmm. And I knew what I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about, you know, like with my challenges, I know biggest, cha biggest challenges that I have, but I was like, no, but I, there's something that I feel like one, I wants to come out. Mm. And so, and also about, I love also, I, I, you know, things that surprise me, like it surprised me as well. Like when I was talking about how, you know, putting people before you and I, and immediately I was like, that's not it. Because that's what that's what we are doing right now, and that's not serving us at all, right? It's that's not. Right. That's right. That's so, right. That's, and especially yeah. as a mother, you know, I think that's one of the biggest problems with women. Actually, it is yeah. one of the biggest barriers for women is the the natural uh, leaning into putting other people first. Yeah, yeah, which is beautiful, you know, it's beautiful, exactly. but it's not serving us. So that's it, right. That's right. It's it doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean, right, it doesn't mean that we don't, that we have to change that fundamentally caring part of us. That's right. But we need to shift that. Yes. And like, beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful thank quote. you. Very beautiful. beautiful quote that's going to make uh, louder. Very beautiful quote. So, Thank yeah, you again thank for you. joining me. I, 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 as I said, I could keep talking to you forever. I'm going to send you an email once we're ready to publish, which will be in a couple of weeks, uh, with the link. So I'll tag you on all the, the, the stuff that we send out and on social media. When you, oh, Great. I did send you an email. That's right. If, if you can go in and have a look at the online form so that you can put in the details of things that we want, because it's important for me to make sure that your messaging and the, the, the way that you language things and is included in those notes uh, and include your okay. social media handles, uh, a pick that we can use to promote the podcast for you. And then once we've got all that detail, uh, we'll send you an, a, syn a synopsis with the links and we'll tag you on all the content. Perfect. Um, okay. And, I'll look at that. Know, and, and Yeah. Beautiful. Um, once I send you the final one, I'll include a request for you to pay it forward as well. So if there's someone you feel that would, you know, get ba benefit from, you know, joining the interview and telling their story this with the world and, you know, getting some spotlight on amplifying their message would be also most grateful. Amazing. I, I can, I can think of a few people. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. I love it. Um, Anything tell your daughter. Yes. Tell your daughter about she's the universe. Tell her to go oh, look. Right. She's the universe.org. Yeah. I think okay, she will great. love it. Like the girls. Yeah. The girls are really amazing. And, and if she will like to come and join us, that'll be amazing. Okay. Fantastic. I'll get her to do that. All Yay. right. Thank you so okay. much. You're welcome. Take Talk care. Later. They have a picture of us. Oh, you want to take it or how does that work? 
I will just take a screenshot here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea because I, I can't look at the screen at the same time. I've got different cameras. <laughs> you take one. You'll share it with okay. me, right? Yes, I will. Awesome. Thank you so Yay. much. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.